Today here on RumbleStrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we are behind the wheel of a 2018 Mazda 6. Now, this vehicle still sells in pretty good numbers, but it's in a segment that's dying. Manufacturers are abandoning it. So does this segment even matter anymore? And if you are gonna buy something in this segment, should you buy this? That's what we're going to find out on this episode of RumbleStrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive. While the mid-size four-door sedan segment used to be the biggest market uh, for North America at least, maybe not worldwide, but certainly Europe it was important as well, um, that has changed in the last 10 to 15 years to the point where Ford has abandoned the market, at least in, again, North America. They are dropping the Fusion, which is their segment here, rather than spend a couple billion dollars to compete in a segment where sales are down 20 to 30% over the last five or six years. For example, Camry used to sell something close to 400,000 units a year, uh, Accord something like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, three hundred and fifty thousand units a year, and now both of those manufacturers are struggling to sell three hundred thousand. Now we get to Mazda, which is definitely not the sales leader, uh, and they're not even going to do. I think they're probably going to do about a hundred thousand Mazda sixes. Uh, I'd have to double check. We can always put the sales figures in here if you care. Point is, everyone's going to crossovers. So why put it up, put the effort into something like a Mazda 6 or any other mid-size four-door uh, segment car? Well, the answer is, if gas goes back over $5 a gallon at some point, do you really wanna be stuck in a crossover? Is that all you wanna be selling, your crossovers and SUVs? Mazda case, no. So if you're gonna bother to be in the segment, you might as well produce something good and of quality, right? Because you gotta justify that market segment and market entry. And with the Mazda 6, it's right there among the best. Sorry, distracted by a uh, Lotus Evora. Um, while the Kia Optima tends to be our go-to choice for the segment, if anyone asks, you know, what should I buy? Uh, because it has uh, reasonable styling and really good value for money and the, uh, the quality is, is pretty spot on. You forget about the Mazda sometimes. And I'm not sure why. Because from a styling standpoint, it is among, if not the best in the segment. It has a nice cross between Japanese simplicity minimalism with a hint of Italian styling curves, right? Um, it is a really good looking car and I think it's something that will look good for 20 years, if not longer. It's, it's that spot on. It's not something you really wanna mess with too much. The interior of this one is pretty solid. Now this is a top level trim and the interior of this is nicer than the Kia Stinger GT we drove uh, previously to this. Now the Kia stickered at 48.5, let's say, uh, something close to that. This is uh, a tick over 36. So $12,000 difference, and this feels closer to something like you would find in a $40,000 car, if not in some ways better. There's a couple little trim pieces. There's some wood here, uh, or wood applique. It looks nice, but as soon as you touch it, it feels literally like a thin sheet of laminate over a piece of metal or plastic. So, bit of a miss there. It'd be nice if that was actually wood, or at least, you know, 16th of an inch uh, laminate versus what feels like a piece of, you know, vinyl. <laughs> um, but other than that, really don't have any complaints about materials in the interior. Now, that's not to say we don't have a couple issues with some things here in the interior. Um, number one, the infotainment after a few years, we're comfortable with it. It's just not our favorite 
design or layout. A common, like the, the knob that's down here and some of the buttons, that's fine, but then there's some touch stuff up here and trying to organize music and the channels and favorites and where it defaults to sometimes when you start up. It just, it needs a bit of a rethink. Um, it's kind of the worst of a couple different worlds. And that's unfortunate because, you know, this is a Bose system in here. And for a Bose system, it's not bad. The other item that we'll take issue with in this is the seats. Now, gen in general, they're pretty good. They're comfortable, but the bottoms of the seats are a little short. Um, they need to be just a little bit longer, a couple, two, three inches longer, just to give you a little more lower leg support and come closer to the crook of your knee there. The reason we bring that up is because this is an incredibly good car for doing a lot of miles in. We seem to say that a lot lately, um, but it is one of the things we noticed on a 70 mile run on the highway is this thing was just cooking. It was just, it was rolling, it was good, it was comfortable, it was quiet, and um, very much enjoyed the time on the highway in this. On top of that, it returned uh, just shy of 31 miles to the gallon. So very good on that as well. So the engine in this is a two and a half liter four cylinder engine, which is you know, pretty good size for a four cylinder engine these days. Um, it has, and, and this is what really struck us. I think I'll get the numbers a little bit right, but I want to say 227 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque. Why is that interesting? Well, as soon as I saw the numbers, they had a flashback. The 92 Ford Mustang uh, 5 liter LX hatchback I owned at one point in time in the, what was it, mid 90s, the 5 liter V8 had about 210 horsepower and 305 foot pounds of torque. So that's where we've come. It has half the displacement, half the cylinders, and makes the same power. Not bad. Well, it probably weighs about the same too, about 3,300 pounds. This has all the modern amenities you would expect. It has radar cruise control, lane departure, and every other technology thing that does nothing for driver enjoyment or enhancement. Um, it's just there because everyone says you have to have it there, and in this technology-obsessed world, you can't leave anything out. But let's get back to that driving uh, enjoyment. There are those in the enthusiast community who will say, well, Mazda, right? Because zoom, zoom, and whatever and you know driving involvement you're stretching on that one that's not to say that it's bad to drive it's fine this is is a perfectly good vehicle to to drive and it's better than most vehicles in the segment the ride is comfortable it handles the bomb craters we have for roads here in southeast michigan just fine but don't mistake this for some kind of super sports sedan uh, this has an open differential and the moment you like start turning a corner and hammer it It's spinning the tires and understeering and if you push it in on an off-ramp at all or on-ramp or off-ramp It's gonna understeer Noticeably not horribly, but certainly noticeably Backseat room in this is absolutely fine. I have no problem sitting behind myself uh, 510, 511, somewhere in that neighborhood, and seat set for me, I can certainly sit behind myself with no problems. The back seats are comfortable. The trunk is large, not enormous, but certainly as big as you will probably ever need. Um, you know, this does all the things that you would ask for interior-wise in a four-door sedan. So let's circle back to the beginning, the Mazda 6. Is it a vehicle that is worth buying? Well, if you're shopping in the mid-sized four-door sedan segment, absolutely. Uh, as we said in the open, the Kia Optima tends to be our go-to choice just because of value, price, quality, content. And especially when it comes to price, Kia dealers are all about pushing the deal. And like if you have, uh, you know, a job and, and a pulse or a pulse and a job, um, you probably have to have the pulse before you can have a job, but unless you work for the government, right? Um, 
you know, Kia will, it'll, it'll get you financed somehow. So they'll, they'll push whatever junk paper they need to to get you into a car. Uh, Mazda, maybe not so much. Uh, they're a little more normal with their with their paper and their financing. So at the end of the day, this is a segment that is disappearing. It's not going to go away completely, but how relevant it's going to be in the next few years is hard to say. That said, Mazda 6 should be among, if not your, top choices for the segment. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.